Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Wherever you are located in the world, be welcome in our third DigiCare webinar from Syngenta. My name is Benoit Husser, Global Training Lead in the Seedcare Institute based in Basel, Switzerland. I'm your moderator today. First, a few rules about this webinar. Your camera and microphones are muted. So if you have a question, you can type it in, in the box at the bottom right of your screen. All the questions will go to the panelists and presenters. The webinar is also recorded, and you will get a link to look at it later at your convenience. In our last webinar, Martin Ferber, our head of commercial and key account management in Seedcare, explained that because of the fast spreading of the coronavirus, Syngenta had to cancel his participation in all events and congresses. That's also the case for the face-to-face -face meetings and trainings. This is why we have launched these webinars to stay in connection yes, with you and to be able to support you. The coronavirus is spreading and impacting us all. And in Syngenta, we have business continuity plans, but at the same time, we strictly follow the recommendations, practicing social distancing on home office. Personally, in the Alsace where I live with my family, I'm entering in my seventh week of home office, and I don't have any problems about managing long hair. Now, today in this webinar, I have the pleasure to introduce you to the two experts around me. It is Alex Hemming, Global Lead for Recipe Development and Quality Assessment, Christoph Lupfer, Global Lead Application and Engineering, and we are the three of us from the Sitka Institute. I guess you have heard about the Sitka Institute, but let me update you with uh, today's map of the network. We represent more than 100 experts spread in 14 facilities today, 16 by the end of the year, and more to come all around the world. We perform experiments, studies, we deliver trainings and workshops to share the best practices in an end-to-end -end support from the seed treatment product to the treated seed in the field. If you want to know more about our, our organization and our service categories, please visit our website as indicated at the bottom of this slide. The Seedcare Institute plays a central role in the commercial offer, Seedcare offer. We talk about the PIS offer. PIS stands for Product Application and Services. We have heard on products in the previous webinars about our rich portfolio on the new solutions we are launching these days, Saltro and Fortenza Duo, for example. Beyond the biological performance of our products, we, from the Sika Institute, provide the expertise for both the application of the seed treatment product, but also the services for the demand creation. We say the Sika Institute represents the engine of the PIS offer. The title of today's webinar is Quality is Everything. You know, in trainings I'm giving in the Seedcare Institute, when I ask participants, what represents for you a good treated seed? Their first reaction is always about the visual aspect of the treated seed. Seeds have to look nice. Of course, we know that, yes, the appearance is important. It is important for the farmer when he opens the seed bag at the planting time. It is important as well for the operator when he checks the quality of the seeds coming out of the treatment line. But quality is in focus much earlier. 
already at harvest time of the seed, at the preparation, the processing of the seed, and of, of course, at the treatment level. Seeds are alive, and to permit the full expression of a variety's potential, we have to care about the quality of the seed lot, the quality of the seed treatment formulation, the quality of the application of the seed care solution. This, to don't harm the seed and uh, make sure it is well protected. Now, my two colleagues will introduce us to the Seed Care Institute approach on quality of treated seeds. Alex Hemming will now tell us about the criteria we consider for a critical quality measure. Alex, the floor is yours. Well, thank you so much, Benoit. So I'm going to start talking about active ingredient loading. And this is important for two reasons. The first one is to make sure you're supplying the right rate of chemical to your growers so that it's effective in the field to protect their investment in seed. That's what they've paid for after all. But it also helps you as the treater to ensure efficiency in your process. You're not losing some of that precious product somewhere along the line, and that's just costing you money. The best techniques today all start with extracting the coating from the seed with a solvent. This removes all the chemicals from the surface of the seed, and also the color as well, as you can see on this photograph on the left. Then we can analyze the, what's in that solvent. So typically that could be done by chromatography, sometimes called HPLC or UPLC, which is an expensive specialist equipment and it needs expert technicians and a well set up laboratory to use it. It's for sure the most accurate method, but it's the most expensive and it can only be carried out in those fixed laboratory locations. So you need to send your seeds there to get the results. Alternatively, in the Seed Care Institute, we have another method, which is shown in this example on the right. This is our seed loading analysis kit. This uses a colorimetry technology. It's much cheaper and it's handheld. It can be used on any site. In this technique, we just measure the color part of the seed treatment. So it relies on knowing the relationship between the color and the active ingredient in the recipe. As long as you know that, it's quite useful. But if you don't, it can be much less accurate. Next slide, please. Now, when you take samples for quality assessment, it's really important to understand the statistics. Just one measurement does not tell the whole story. The reason for this is that variances or errors are multiplied. Each variance in the steps between treating your seed and measuring the loading accumulates more errors. So your treating machine may have some variance in the pumps or the weigh scales that you want to know about. But you also have some variances when you take the samples from different parts of the line or different parts of the seed bin. And of course, some errors from the measuring techniques itself. The loading you measure with just one sample is actually in a window of variability shown on this graph, not a precise point. So for example, if you analyze one sample and see it has 80% of the expected loading, the real value for the seed lot could be 90%, which passes your quality control limit, or only 70%, which isn't good enough. You need to take more samples over different times to get a good average. The variances for extraction and measurement should be known by the experts performing those tests, and they should be able to advise how many samples are needed. Next slide, please. So now I want to talk about visual appearance. When growers receive their seed, their first impression always comes from how it looks. And many treaters take a special pride in getting a good finish and customized color on their seed. But it can be a long journey from the treater to the farm, and the seed may not arrive in the same state it left the line. Rub off testing as you show in this video, is a simulation of seed-to-seed -seed attrition during bagging and transport. 
the seed is rolled over and over at a constant speed for a fixed time. The test can be performed when the seeds are still wet from the treater to simulate the attrition experienced on the production line, for example, in elevators or on belts. And it can also be performed on dry seed to simulate movement inside bags during transport. The seed coating behaves differently when it's wet or dry, so it's important to check both. An optimized seed treatment with a good sticking polymer will form a tough film that covers the whole seed and is not damaged during this test. The amount of damage can be assessed by comparing the, the seed to a standard set of seeds. Now, visual appearance can be assessed, of course, just using your eyes. But to eliminate that human bias, Syngenta Seed Care have developed the Quest Pro unit, as shown in this video. The seeds are fed individually into the device, which takes a digital image of each one. The software can collect information on the size and shape of the seeds, as well as mapping the colors on the surface. So you see here the Quest Pro unit opened up so you can see the seeds falling through the imaging chamber and individual seeds being photographed and that information is then captured in special software which is able to perform different calculations on the seed in this way different seed lots can be more easily compared with each other and it also gives some information about the differences between each seed in the sample, which may help fix problems on your treatment line. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna talk about dust off. Ensuring low dust off is the right way to control off target drift of your active substances during planting. Dusty treated seed is a risk for operator exposure and environmental contamination. The industry standard is this specific method, the Heubach test. The seeds are rolled in a drum and the dust collected on a filter where it can be weighed. This dust is a mixture of natural particles from the seed itself and the treatment. And for that reason, it's very important to properly clean and de-dust seeds prior to treating. The Hoiback test has been validated as a good model for real world planting operations. That means the amount of dust collected is correlated with the environmental contamination from sowing dusty seeds. For that reason, Hoiback is used for a growing number of seed certification schemes in different countries. Here at the Seed Care Institute around the world, we collect over 20,000 Hoiback dust measurements every year as part of our effort to ensure safe use of Syngenta's products. Next slide, please. Now, planting is a stressful time for the grower. They might only have a short window with good weather to get out onto the field early in the season. They need their seed to flow easily out of the bags or boxes and into the planting hopper, and then through the meeting, metering and delivery system of their planter. Poor plantability can lead to the seed forming blockages of distribution lines or poor singulation at the planting discs. This may be caused by the seed coating being a bit sticky, especially if it heats up in the planter due to hot weather or just the mechanical friction inside the machine. This can lead to problems like these in these photographs, the one on the left where one sewing unit on a planter has blocked, leaving a full empty row or the photograph on the right, where you can see some skips in the row, which have been marked with these white balls. Problems like this directly reduce yield over the growing area. Definitely not what your customer wants to see. That's all from me. I hope it's been a useful overview of seed quality measurement tools that we use in the Seed Care Institute. I'll hand you back to Benoit. Thank you very much, Alex. With you, we discovered what are the critical quality criteria to consider way beyond the visual aspect of the treated seed. 
let's listen now to Christoph, Christoph Lupfer, on what are the improvements you could make to the application process. Christoph, the floor is yours. Many thanks, Benoit. Good morning, good afternoon, or even good evening, everybody. Thanks again for joining the session today. It's a real pleasure to be able to connect with you today from my home location, as you're all working uh, remote these days, located in Alsace, where despite current isolation restriction, we could hear and see many farmers all weekend long planting their corn fields in full speed. Now. So that's relating directly to our topic today. So now that we could hear more about some important application quality measures, let's talk a bit more about the application management itself. In application management, it is much about using the right products and the right mix with most efficient equipment and process. For that, we also talk about the services, focusing on the process and equipment parameter settings on our customer sites, as well as the value of those services. To conclude, we also look at the importance of new technologies related to efficiency and differentiation of the final treated seeds. Because clearly at the end, all what we do, it is about the experience of our final customer, the growers. Next slide, please. So if we look really <clears throat> at the first piece of application management, it is a lot about the importance of high, using high quality products and high quality recipe. On one side, we bring high quality product to market, thoroughly tested and optimized for examples such as chemical stability or physical stability, where we do up to two or three years stability check, depending on use condition, with for example, high temperature, freezing cycles, of course, we also do biological and application performance tests of our products. Our products also have high consistency on production with very specific ranges for production quality. Another focus beyond product quality is also about the packaging we use for our products to make them easier for handling. On the other side, we provide high quality recipes for us at the Seedcare Institute, recipe is not only about combining for product together and letting the customer trying to make the best out of it. Recipe development follows intense test phase that determines success at many steps of the application process. For example, we recommend recipes and product combination to our customers based on many use conditions such as temperature, humidity, seed storage, we also tailor recipe depending on the customer needs, for example, to differentiate the seeds. We also bring expertise in the field of additive testing, such as polymers, to make specific recommendations. As we can see at the bottom right corner of my slide here, we have also a picture that illustrates a tool that we developed, such as recipe calculator, that is not only here to simplify calculation of product use rates, but also make it easier and smoother for conversion of units specific to crops geographies and also reduce complexity and time spent of customer in those type of activities. Next slide, please. Now let's talk a bit more about the application process and equipment efficiency services. By watching a typical application process the first time, it might appear extremely easy and slick. Typically, a few hundreds of kilograms of feet can get treated in less than a minute, a few seconds. But to make it as efficient, several areas need to be well mastered. As first, the professional handling of the product prior to application. This, for example, includes processes like recirculation, proper transfer, proper mixing. We pay much attention to have easy to pump product, for example, and also optimize packaging to save time and, re and re reduce exposure. As second, we also, of course, select the most adapted equipment as well as its parameter setting. 
with key objective of capacities, quality, and easy integration in the whole seed processing cycle, depending again on the operation type. Because we know here any disruption in the seed treatment application process has a very strong impact on the ability to deliver those seeds to growers. So everything should be done to reduce or eliminate the season disruption. As third, we also spend much attention in the handling of those treated seeds going from the application equipment through the transportation process to the final user, the grower, prior to planting. Here, a critical parameter is clearly the flowability of those seeds from either the simple bag or larger containers. That step can be really disrupting if the seeds are not flowing well or at the ex expected speed for the growers. So a key element in all those areas include our strong collaboration and partnership with industry leading equipment suppliers. That clearly puts us in a unique place to bring innovative solutions to our diverse customer. In summary, efficiency is much about optimizing handling of product, equipment parameter settings, and handling of the final treated seats. For that, we deliver services going from base recommendation or best practices sharing to site assessment with in-depth support on site performance measurement of our solutions. Next slide, please. Now, what do we do to bring all our application solution to life? And what are the services we bring to our customer sites? First, we can provide site assessment for process, safety, or quality improvement. Secondly, we also provide consulting advice for new site establishment that include, for example, inputs in design, capacity, integration in the broader operation. Third, we also provide specific support for the seed treatment process changes, such as product offers or in-season troubleshooting. In the case study example I present on this slide, focusing on a typical corn operation, the impact of a full set of services related to operational efficiency, quality analytics, and also simplified product mix showed a really substantial saving of almost half a million dollars per season. This really shows that our focus not only goes to technical services and recommendation, but also support customers in saving time and return on investment to make the quality operation more profitable and clearly help them to differentiate in the market segment. That is for us another aspect of quality and ways to value it. Next slide, please. Now, if you look at the future of application, what's going to come next? In Syngenta Seed Care, and based on many customer feedback and discussion, we believe that much of the focus will go to the space of new technology supporting higher accuracy and quality. More specifically, we see in application management clear move toward digital control of processes, increased traceability of treated seeds for both the regulators and growers, more equipment automation integration in broader seed operation, also new tools for online and inline process quality control. Basically, getting a print on executed job as when you go to grocery store and you get your ticket at the end of the process. We also see more tailored equipment for different markets and crops. The treating operators will get more digital tools to run more consistent process batch after batch and season after season. The piece of certification and inspection of equipment and or treatment sites is also something else to consider in the future. We can mention example of recent regulation evolution on that topic in countries like Germany or Canada. To summarize it all, application management 
is a lot about efficiency, services, and well-adapted equipment solution as clearly for the growers and our customers, every seed count. And we want to make more crop out of every drop. Many thanks to everybody listening. And we now hand over to Benoit for the next part of our webinar. Hey, thank you. Thank you to our two presenters, uh, Christoph, Alex. Uh, well done, guys. I think we should also thank here um, our Syngenta colleagues in the network for their help to gather this information, especially by providing pictures on a quite short notice. Here, I also want to thank you, our customers, for the confidence in sharing with us your experience with our seed care solutions. Because most of what uh, we presented today is nothing else than real based experience. We learn from you. And this helps us exactly to build the future of quality services in our seed care entity. Now it's your time. Time for questions. It looks like we have already successful feedback or, or many questions came in here on especially on uh, some topics I have grouped here. Yeah, they came in before the webinar, of course, since we have sent out uh, the invitation, but you can still send your own question now. Many questions on the topic of registration, pesticides, seed care formulation. Let's take uh, this uh, first uh, um, question in this area, maybe for Alex. Alex, uh, our formulation chemist from background, I think you will like this one. Do you think the microplastic ban will lead to difficulty in maintaining seed treatment quality? Wow, a large one. Alex? Well, if, if you're in Europe, then you'll be fully aware that the, uh, this microplastics regulation, which is being proposed by the European Commission, uh, does have in scope uh, seed treatment. And the reality is that that regulation will have a big impact on the seed treatments and especially the film coating polymers that are available on the market today. However, that regulation is not yet finalized. Um, current indications from the European Commission are that it won't be in place until 2025 at the very earliest. It's probably going to be later than that. As a result of that ban though, synthetic polymers, synthetic microplastics, uh, will be, have to be removed from all seed treatments. And, and uh, that will mean that quite a lot of seed treatment products, but most especially those film coating polymers will need to be reformulated. Um, what we will do from our side, from Seed Care Institute, we will support all our customers um, to make those transitions and we'll continue working with the different providers and to test uh, different microplastic free products and, and film coating polymers that come on the market and make sure that they are uh, working together well with our, with our product offer. Thank you, Alex. Uh, quite some challenges in ahead, yeah? And, uh, but uh, Syngenta and we in the Seed Care Institute have already started intensive working programs on this matter for this uh, transition. Thank you. Um, in another area, I noticed also several questions came in on stewardship on the constraints users are facing these days. For this reason, we have invited our expert Bruno Sona, our stewardship specialist in the Seedcare Institute, to join us. Hello, Bruno, can you take uh, this question? How do you refer to quality standards in stewardship? A quite general one, but uh, yeah probably touching several aspects. How do you refer to quality standards in stewardship? Thank you, Benoit, for this uh, nice question. I can see that people are following your uh, lessons. So um, I will give one example. If I look back that more than 10 years ago, we noticed that when we had to register one product, that uh, in the field trials, the dust drift of the field at the time of sowing 
was directly related to a specific threshold that we have to pass on the seed quality, the seed dustiness. In the SeedK Institute, we have adopted these standards for all crops and in all countries. Now it's such a standard that even if we try to register a new crop in all uh, the world, we have to report internally that we could match this standard. So it's really part of the Seed Care Institute to make this uh, alive. In uh, Germany, uh, they are even going further. They are paying further attention now to the active ingredient that it is in the dust. And uh, we had for one product, German regulatory agency required that seeds on the market comply with a limit of active ingredient mm -hmm. in this dust. And after one year of market monitoring, we were able to demonstrate that seeds quality match that regulatory target. You can notice <laughs> it's then. This challenge has been extended now to a second crop, a second product, but this time the target is for the sum of the three active ingredients. Based on our experience, we are optimistic that we will have a positive outcome. I guess I have answered your question. Yes, thank you, Bruno. I think uh, we did well to invite you to uh, take this question. Uh, it's quite a specific topic, uh, the stewardship. And thank you for giving us a, a good uh, overview on, on how to use this quality in this matter. So many more questions here. Yeah. So I think this one is for Christoph. Christoph, what do you think? future technologies like digital agriculture will mean for seed treatment? Well, thanks for asking this great question. I think uh, I could say I would have expected a uh, question that direction, especially with current times. And of course, a lot of evolution we see. So it's, it's a broad topic, right? And if we just talk about uh, the, the impact of, um, of this digital agriculture space on seed treaters, I think still a lot will happen around uh, more use of data, yeah? uh, transfer of treatment data uh, to different users, of course, to the end customers, yeah? getting more information on what was exactly done, be able to track down when operation happened, what was exactly applied, integrate those data into potentially, of course, the crop management systems for those growers. Yeah? And, uh, and this is nothing else. I think what will happen in that space, nothing else than what already happened in other industry, like the food industry or uh, other sectors. Uh, the, the other piece, I think, around application technology, of course, we have already pretty precise uh, technologies, uh, but still, it's going to go beyond that aspect as well. So more accuracy uh, towards the application technologies, uh, the equipment themselves. Yeah? Uh, potentially be able to vary the rates during the processes much more than we did in the past. Huh? Uh, of course, this is also going to require us to collaborate more in, uh, in the equipment, uh, with the equipment industry in that space, to have more partnership also with new technology providers, of course, a digital space, a digital angle uh, of control of those uh, technologies. Uh, so I think that's really going to be a, a large driver. Yeah. Thanks again for the question. Uh, if you have more specific questions in that angle, please reach out to us. Yeah? We'll be happy to uh, to go that direction. Yeah? Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, Christoph. I knew you will like it when it goes to uh, digital ag. And thank you for your view on this future. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Next question. I think I will get. Uh, I will take this one. Do you have any plans to expand the CK Institute network? You know, we often get this question when we explain our services, services we offer to our customers. And um, our aim is really to fulfill a need in case of a launch or development of a new CK solution. There will be a request to support our customers. Yeah? And we want to provide similar quality services to all our clients, wherever they are. So watch out in the two more 
there are two more CK institutes opening in the coming months. We have time to for all the questions, of course. One more question for you, Christoph. I think it's in the space of engineering. I will soon install a new C treater. What would you recommend doing for the op opti optimal, sorry, for optimal application? Mixing all products together or direct injecting them individually? Well, thanks again for that question uh, to whoever who asked this one. I need to say it's a, it's a really common question uh, that we get a lot and I received also a lot of course in my past uh, experience and, and talking to customer. I think uh, it, it's not uh, one, one answer fits all, right? So it's, it depends of course a lot on your process, on the crop you wanna treat and on the equipment technology as we already told before. But if we look really at the recent evolution in that aspect, uh, there was a lot of uh, increased interest toward direct injection technologies. For what reason? I think uh, it could be for, for specific topics like, of course, reduced exposure, uh, but also sometimes uh, reduced mistakes and complexity in mixing steps, depending again on your operation. But clearly, if we go to the direction of direct injection, it requires highly performing inline static mixing systems, for example. Uh, or very accurate dosing system for all components. So this doesn't really mean reduced investment. That's really important to consider if you move that direction. In general, direct injection also helps to reduce cleaning or waste of product in some step. Yeah? So if you have a specific operation uh, and you would like to get our recommendation, I think feel free to reach out to our teams wherever you are uh, in your different countries, in your region, and we would be able to also help you in that aspect. But clearly towards direct injection, it's uh, one of the new directions that we see more and more uh, people going. I think it's also related to uh, the fact that we started to combine more and more products. We went a lot towards uh, premix solution, but actually is also reducing the needs for different components mixing. Thanks again for the question. Great question. Thank you, Christoph. So the there are questions very specific, uh, direct injection, yes, no. And there are other questions uh, more broader looking for the future. Maybe this one for Alex. What new ways of measuring quality are coming in the future? This is a broader one, yeah? Oh, well, of course, the technology never stands still. So there will, there will be new ways. I think a lot of effort has been put into some of these direct techniques where you could just kind of scan the seed, the, scan the dry treated seed, and this would clearly be the preference. That would be fantastic that we didn't need to go through this step of removing all the chemical or the color from the surface of the seed. The issue with that is there really is quite a small amount of chemical on the seed, especially for the seed applied fungicides. And so up until now, there haven't been any techniques which can give you a good enough result. But as I say, the technology continues to evolve. And my feeling is it won't be too long before we start to see uh, techniques that can assess the seed uh, directly um, for, for active ingredient loading. Um, in the meantime, in the next five years, I think we will still be sampling seed and, and analyzing it in laboratories. Uh, after that, I guess, improvement in miniaturization, in uh, the interest of being able to measure chemicals, small amounts of chemicals in the environment, this is obviously improving all the time. Um, for other techniques, so for visual appearance techniques, for example, I mean, this is, this is where I'm sure the advances will come much more quickly. I mean, the Quest Pro technology is, is actually not, uh, is more than five years old now. And we already see improvements in digital processing, in cameras, in all of this kind of thing. So for sure, the ability to use a kind of digital imaging to look at seeds and, and give some kind of quantitative measure of, of how well they've been treated. 
then uh, for sure this will come much more quickly. And and I think this, you know, what we're doing now, right, is is this this webinar, this ability to connect people from all around the world to to one central point and and explain information to talk to them. This is going to be another another feature, I'm sure. Um, is is not just the ability to do a kind of a, a, just a, a technique or a measurement somewhere, but to actually be able to have the results, have someone help you with the results uh, remotely. I'm sure that this will all be part of the service offer of the future. Thank you, Alex. Back to a, a more practical question, probably to Christoph. Christoph, I will start up a new corn seed treatment site. What should be my application rate for good coverage? Well, <clears throat> looks like a lot of operational questions. Um, and of course, also a, a broad, uh, broad topic. I think uh, it, it can be easily summarized, right? Um, to, to say, depending on your application uh, components, right? Depending on your different products, complexity of the recipe you want to apply, we we'll probably range it between 0 0.7, 0 0.8 liter, or up to 1.5 liter per 100 kg. Yeah? But of course, some operation might end up in pretty larger amount, yeah? depending on the region of the world where you are. So for, for those type of extreme situation, of course, we also have solutions. Yeah? Uh, in some instance, it would uh, result in using type of drying agents, because the beauty of using uh, liquid components is also sometimes a challenge on the other end to have two wet seeds. So, so using drying agent might help in that instance, uh, but also sometimes drying technologies. Um, but that's typically what we would recommend. And of course, for that, if you are installing a new site, you should also think about your capacity, yeah? your pumping capacities. Um, take a look at the individual component application ranges. That is really, really critical because uh, the beauty of using uh, low use rate components can also be a challenge sometimes to pump it through the process. So again, that's, that's typically the range that we would recommend, uh, and usually you would come up with those type of recommendation if you use one of our recipe. But again, like in my previous question, I think if you have a specific operation you are starting up pretty soon for the next coming season, 2021, uh, please let us know, reach out to your local team, uh, and we are gonna get a hold of you for, for your specific operation. Thanks for the great question. Thank you, Christoph. Maybe a last one for Alex, direction of uh, polymers, I guess. How can we improve the appearance of our seeds? Well, that, that's, that's uh, the million dollar question, right? How to always get really good looking seeds. So it, it starts with what color you want to try to achieve and the base color that comes with the seed treatment products. Um, so for example, it's pretty difficult if you've got some red seed treatment products to end up with a, a yellow or green treated seed. It's, it's possible, but it's, it's not as easy. Um, then you have to get the right amount of colorant. And we always recommend to use a good quality film coating polymer uh, because it looks good, because you get great coverage and it keeps the dust down. Uh, and you should get better seed flow as well. Uh, so once you've got your recipe, then it's mostly around controlling the amount of water to make sure you have good coverage. Um, not too much, not too little. And that, that volume that you're adding to the seed then needs to change as your seed size changes. And it could maybe need to change as well with the variety of seeds. So what, what does the seed have a very waxy surface or not? And that's that, that of course varies hugely with what type of seeds you're trying to you're trying to coat. And then as Christoph mentioned, there are the powders that you can put on top. You they can look really good, um, but the risk is you can increase dust. So um, judicious use of, of top coating or finishing powders um, will get the best appearance. And then try to set up your line so that the seeds are not damaged. So don't have them uh, rattling around just after the treatment. So try to treat them gently as they, can, as they leave the treeser and uh, go to a storage bin. Thank you, Alex, for this uh, last question. I 
kept an eye on the stopwatch and we are getting closer to the end of this webinar. Uh, and as we will not be able to, to treat all the questions we got in live here, we will split them between the experts on the right back to you guys individually, yeah, as we have your email address. I promise we will do that in the coming days. Yeah. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, I think we got some good insights, rich information from our two experts over the 45 last minutes. I hope you learned about how we approach the quality in the seed care institute. At the end of the day, it's all about you on your seeds yeah, to help you at the application management level and to differentiate in the market and stay competitive. So with this, I wanted to thank you for your interest in our DigiCare webinars. I'm glad to inform you that we will have our next edition on April 27. The invitation will be sent out in the coming days. The promising title is Lessons Learned from Chinese COVID-19 Experience. In the meantime, I wish you all the best. You and your family, stay safe. Please follow the rules of your local authorities. We hope to see you very soon again. Thank you for listening and goodbye.